So today's video is going to be on solving the question that is, what is the perfect pigment? For those who can't be bothered to watch to the end, the answer is that there isn't one. But if you don't know why that is, then I strongly recommend that you do watch to the end. Predicting the outcome of your heel results is only as good as your colour theory knowledge. For my free colour theory mini course, see the link in the description. It absolutely astonishes me that I see in forums constantly that people don't know what type of pigment they're using on their clients. They just know the brand name and they might be using it just because someone told them it was good. You have a duty of care to your clients to know what you're putting in their faces and know the long-term results of it. So let's break down the general types of pigments. There are organic pigments, inorganic pigments and hybrids. Organic sounds healthier, but it refers to the fact that the material comes from organic matter, such as carbon. Carbon pigments are more similar to traditional body tattoo pigments and can be quite popular with artists because they're very easy to use and go in the skin quickly. They can also be popular with clients because they last a long time. The issue with that is that they can be hard to remove or change the shape and they can be a lot more permanent. They also heal cool over time and can stay quite saturated. Inorganic pigments are called that because they come from inorganic matter such as iron oxide or titanium dioxide. These have comparatively larger molecules and so can take longer to get into the skin. However, they do fade quicker and so you've much more chance of your work fading totally or with very little residue than with carbon. These tend to heal warmer over time. Hybrids mix both organic and inorganic together with the idea of giving the best of both worlds. So which is best? Well, like with needles, we have to ask what for, who for, and who's doing it. So let's start with what we're doing. Let's take eyeliner, for example. With eyeliner, we want to get bold, dark, long-lasting results. So I would usually use a heavy carbon-based pigment for this. We want it to be bold and long-lasting. We need to remember that carbon molecules are really small compared to iron oxide molecules, which are much larger. So carbon goes into the skin really easily, which is why a lot of artists like to use it. Because of the smaller molecule size though, carbon can migrate, which means it travels through the systems in the body. So with someone with eyes like this, I would stick to iron oxide. So what about brows then? Well, carbon tends to heal cool over time and microblading generally heals a little cooler than ombre brows. So if you're microblading with carbon, you can have a tendency to heal far too cool over time. I would certainly recommend to any beginners that are microblading to use an iron oxide. With ombre brows, you absolutely could use a carbon-based pigment, but if you're heavy-handed, that's also going to heal cool. So just be mindful of the kind of hand that you have. I would recommend to all beginners in all styles of brows to stick to iron oxides in the beginning. You don't want to have to end up correcting or removing your old work in years to come. Here are some microbladed brows I didn't do but done with a carbon based pigment that's healed ashy over time. Compare that to these iron oxides that are slightly warm but so much easier to cover. And this colour boost just needs darkening. These brows, however, were done by a beginner with a heavy base carbon pigment and they're over seven years old. There's nothing for it except a long series of removal. So let's take some case studies. This woman has mature skin, so it's thin. She's also really cool. So I would absolutely go for an inorganic pigment and I would also dilute it. This lady has lovely young skin, so I'd discuss what she wanted to achieve and give her the appropriate pigment for that. Do you know what your pigment is? Popular carbon-based organic pigments include Permablend and their artist ranges such as Tina Davis and Brow Daddy, also LI Loaded. Popular inorganic ranges include LI Aqua and Velvet and Monica Rivani. And they also do have some hybrid ranges such as the Gen Boyd range. And as you can see, there's no perfect pigment for every scenario. It's best to have a wide range of knowledge of different pigments for different situations. The pigments that were available 20 years ago are very different from the standards of pigments that we have today. And these are advancing all the time. There are now organic pigments on the market that have technology that makes them fade without ashing. It's best to stay well educated on what's available. We should also be taking into consideration the long-term results, both for our clients and for ourselves. 
we don't want to have to be doing a lot of removing of our old work because we were heavy handed with highly pigmented carbon pigments. Also, don't be frightened to involve your clients in the discussion. They also have a right to know what's going in their face, so you can discuss with them what they want to achieve and talk about the benefits of the different types of pigments available. If you have a nervous client who wants to stay very natural, I would always recommend going for something that's going to fade with even light fastness. Now, I'm going to cover light fastness in more detail on another video. If your client's sole aim is to have bold results that last, then go for something organic and highly pigmented. As long as they're consenting to the procedure, then that's fine. If you have any questions on this subject at all, then please leave them below. I always appreciate your comments, likes, and subscriptions. If you'd like to know more on needles, then click this video. And if you'd like to see some neutralization in action, then click the link for my lip neutralization video here. That's all for today. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon.